Welcome to the Saguaro. Welcome to Saguaro Christian Church. Welcome to Saguaro. Good morning and welcome to Saguaro Christian Church. It is my joy and delight to be able to welcome you to worship this morning. Y'all, today is a special day in the life of Saguaro Christian Church. Many wonderfully beautiful things are happening today. Today in worship, we will receive new faithful partners with Michael and Lori Malone. Remember a few years ago, Saguaro, we changed the language from members to partners, allowing each individual to be able to use all of their gifts for God's service through Saguaro Christian Church. And so you'll be witnesses to their faithfully joining a little bit later. Following worship today, there will be a called congregational meeting. If you need the Zoom link, please let us know. Either send a message to the Facebook account or send Wendy or myself or Fran an email or Tony and we'll make sure you get the Zoom link. Y'all, this particular meeting is to call our new senior minister. And so I hope that you are able to be a part of that, whether that is through Zoom or in person. Y'all, there is so much excitement around this campus as things start to open. But we are still incredibly mindful of the many who are not able to receive the vaccination and for many for whom it is still a challenge to, to navigate this, this world. Remember, we're still in a pandemic, and so I hope and pray that you continue to take care of yourself and to take care of each other. This morning for worship, I invite you to remember that God loves you. And no matter what you say or do, God is going to love you. Always. God always has and always will. And so out of this love, we worship together. And so go ahead and find your Bible or your Bible reading device some way to read scripture along with us. Prepare your communion elements, figure out what you'll use for that sacred and holy meal that we'll do together. Begin thinking about how you might offer yourself up for God's service so that you can live out your calling. I encourage you to share this worship with others. Perhaps there is someone that you know of who, who needs that reminder that God loves them. And then finally, I invite you to find your candle. Go ahead and find that which will help you sense the light in the midst of the dark. And we light this candle each week. And when we light these candles, it reminds us that God is present with us. Not that God hasn't been present all along, but right now during our time together, God is present just a little bit differently. And so as we worship together, may we remember that God is in all of our spaces, that God breathes life into those places, and that it is out of that love that we worship together. And so friends, wherever you might find yourself this morning, I invite you to pass the peace of Christ to those around you, to a screen, to a mirror, and as you do, know that it's being passed right on back to you. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. May we worship our God together. Thanks be to God. I wonder if I'll ever find my way I wonder if my life could really change at all All this earth Could all that is lost ever be found? Could a garden come up from this ground at all? You make beautiful things, you make beautiful things out of the dust. You make beautiful things, you make out of us 
out of chaos life is being found in you. You make beautiful things, you make beautiful things out of the dust. You Ephesians 4, 1 through 16. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of God's gift, of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean? but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who dis descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us came to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. May God add God's blessing to this holy word. Good morning again, Saguaro Christian Church. Casey, thank you so much for reading our scripture. This morning, I want us to play a little game. 
It's called Would You Rather. I'll give you two options. Say them both one time, and then I'll invite you to raise your hand a second time to select which one you'll use. So, practice round. Would you rather vacation to the mountains or to the beach? Mountains, beach. Would you rather be completely invisible for a day or be able to fly for a day? Would you rather eat tacos or burritos? Would you always be 10 minutes late or 20 minutes early? Would you rather know all the mysteries of the universe or know the outcome of every decision you're asked to make? And then last one, would you rather do the laundry or the dishes? Now, I'm sure if I asked harder questions, there would be just as much a variance in our answers as well. Friends, a few years ago, I was selected to participate in the Wabash Pastoral Leadership Program. Many of y'all know this, as I've mentioned about it before, but for those of you who don't, it was an ecumenical leadership opportunity. I was living in Indiana at the time, and, and since it was ecumenical in its design, the conversations were often how shall I say it, a little lively and spirited? You see, we came from all sorts of differences and we really wanted to find something that could connect us, something that we could all agree. And so we worked really hard to find that thing that we could agree on. We came up with, we could all agree that we were called by God to serve the church and we could all agree that God's love is for everyone. And while this statement seems pretty simple and obvious, y'all, it really did take us a while to arrive at this resolution. You see, because each session was lively and engaging, and because we came from so many different perspectives, we needed to find that core, that core that would hold us accountable to one another. You see, after we learned that which brought us together, it helped us to know how to interact with one another. You see, unity doesn't mean uniformity and how we understood each other's roles in the life of the church was important. One of our sessions was around the public work of ministry. Specifically, we had conversations around robes and stoles and albs and collars. We had conversations about when and when not to wear them, and which tradition wore them, and which traditions did not wear them. And seeing as how we all served different churches from across different perspectives, how we showed up in these spaces were different too. But at the end of this particular session, we all decided that we would buy a collar, wear it for a couple weeks, and then report about our experience. Y'all, I'd never worn a collar before. It wasn't part of what I was known about my tradition. And so when I ordered a collar, I, I ordered a collared dress and a collar. I figured it was okay to have options. And so I tried on the dress and then I went to the bathroom and I stared looking at myself in the mirror because staring in the mirror was a person that I hadn't met before. I, I didn't recognize this person looking at me in the mirror. And so it took me a little while to get used to it. But while I was attempting to put on this collar, there are these two stories that appeared in my brain. The first one was this experience that I had when I was in Chicago. And the second one was when I was with a friend of mine's family. When I was in the eighth grade, my eighth grade class took its annual school trip to Chicago. One day while we were in Chicago, we were in the subway, somehow I had become lost. I wasn't typically one to stray from the group, but the stress and the fear and the anxiety built up so much that I was on the verge of having a panic attack. I wasn't quite sure how I became so lost. But as I was sitting on the bench of the subway, I happened to see a nun in a traditional habit walk past me. And somehow, simply the presence of this nun calmed me. It was weird, actually, because I was so centered in the universe at the time that I thought that God sent that nun to calm me. 
The other story was when I was riding in the car with a friend and her family, we were going shopping for the summer. We wanted to buy new bathing suits and new summer clothes. And so as we were driving along the way and watching the world pass on by, a friend of mine caught a group of people wearing bright orange jumpsuits. They were working in this field beside the road and surprised at the strange clothing. My friend asked her mom why they were dressed like that. And her mom answered that they were prison inmates and that they were dressed that way so they could stand out in case they escaped. I remembered these two stories the day my caller arrived. Isn't it peculiar the way that our mind brings these stories to the surface? Looking in that bathroom mirror that day as I was wearing the collared dress, I could see how I would stand out too. For good or for ill, wearing this collar, I would have a hard time blending or escaping, not standing out, standing up. As a beloved mentor of mine in seminary told me, serving the church as a minister, participating in the life of the church as a member, living and loving with God, isn't about serving God perfectly, but about serving God visibly. You see, when we do this, we allow others to learn whatever they can from watching us. Whatever they can from watching us rise and fall. Ephesians is a different book. It's a structure that's different from Paul's other letters. In this particular book, it contains extensive references, in some cases, direct quotes from Paul's other letters. In fact, about a third of Colossians appears in Ephesians in some form. References to the church are not individual, but rather to the whole congregation. You see, scholars have often puzzled over this book. Who was it written for and to whom was, was it written? How long ago and what was it really trying to help us all to see? For in the opening chapters of the letter of Ephesians, God is at work in Christ. Revealing and choosing, adopting and sacrificing, creating and loving and blessing in order to bring differing communions together. In order to bring these communities together, there is this challenge that they faced. You see, in the ancient Near East in the first century, the call to unity, it was more geared towards the Jewish-Gentile divide. There were questions rising and to who gets to be a part of this Jesus movement. You see, it was a big deal. There were so many who were now wanting to be involved, and they were trying to figure out how. Could Gentiles be Christian without knowing the Torah, without circumcision or the law? And if the Gentiles weren't following such codes when following Jesus, did that mean that Jewish people were to give up thousands of years of tradition? Or what parts of tradition? And who decided and how? Y'all, it was a complicated issue to say the, the least. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus the Christ, now all of these differences have all sort of collided and converged in this one moment. There is this new order that was created, a community that was really trying to not know barriers of race or class or gender, a community that was unified in the divine breath, a community that reminded all of us that our humanities were intimately connected with one another. Y'all, we were never called nor intended to be the same. But we are called as Christians to contribute in some way the building up of the body of Christ, y'all. We are each to be filled with the Spirit and empowered with certain gifts. All of us are to make visible our call to this unity, to this following of Jesus. But this visible call of unity, it gets checked, especially when something divisive goes against the personhood the humanity, or that for whom God created. How do you make your calling from God visible in this world? The author of our scripture doesn't deny differences. 
doesn't say that differences aren't to be expected. Rather, these differences are to be celebrated. Unity doesn't mean uniformity because we can disagree and still be unified in Christ. However, through this disagreement and accountability and establishment, accountability is held up. Y'all, a unity that comes from people who are afraid to address concerns or disagreement isn't true unity. A unity that comes from people who are marginalized or pushed out is not true unity. Embedded in our scripture is practical advice for how to make this new, diverse community work. How to bring all of these different people together and unify them for the common goal and purpose of God. How might we let love lead the way? In similar fashion, you see this author of Ephesians proclaims that the calling of Christians is to bear one another in love. To let love lead. Now, bearing with one another is, in fact, to hold each other accountable. You see, far too often, this desire for unity that we deeply, really want, unfortunately creates this everything goes kind of attitude. But to bear with one another in love reminds us that we have permission to help carry each other's burdens, to wade in the messiness with one another, to hold the mirror when needed, to receive grace from one another as we hold each other accountable. Now, accountability to that love will reveal why we need each other and why we need God. If we attempt to do everything on our own, sure, we might get things done. Sure, it might get done quicker. Sure, we might actually do it. But when we do, we deny others the opportunity to serve alongside us. We are partners in this journey, not spectators in each other's stories. We are brought together by Christ's love that fuels all of our lives. And if we think we can do it on our own, where does that leave room for God? If we do everything ourselves, where does the spirit, that divine breath, where does she show up? Y'all, from the very beginning, we were created for relationship. Everything is an interwoven web of relationship. Arthur, author Parker Palmer wrote an article called The Broken Open Heart, Living with Faith and Hope in the Tragic Gaps. He calls us to acknowledge these places of tension in our lives. Palmer calls this separation between what is and what can be this tragic gap. He invites us to live with the uneasiness of the tragic gap rather than avoiding or closing the gap too soon. The Big C Church and the local congregations are rightly placed for us to hold this tension together, to, to stand in this gap, to be in this gap, to allow this gap to be what it needs to be together. Y'all, together we can model if we dare enter into this tragic gap, if we dare allow this place where our disagreements and separations to be real, if we allow this to be that which we can do together, we can stand and be with each other together. Once an old man was very ill and he was laying in his bed and he had these four children. And these four children, they were fighting with each other all of the time. Now, this old man, he was worried about them. He wanted to teach them a lesson, and so he asked them to come to him. And so all four of them walked over to their dad. And when they came, this old man gave them a bundle of sticks and said, Can you break these sticks? The first child tried so hard to break the bundle but nothing. He tried very hard, and then he finally gave up. And so then he handed the stack of sticks to his second sibling. And that second sibling tried and tried and tried so hard. He actually thought it was going to be easy because he just picked the sticks up so easily, but nothing. Then the third child tried, 
and he tried so hard to break the sticks. Nothing. Meanwhile, the, the fourth child was sitting over there laughing at his siblings. You see, he thought it was very clever, so he took one stick at a time and easily broke all of them. The old father then smiled at his children and he said, children, do you understand what happened? It is always easier to break the sticks one by one, but when they are all bundled together, none of y'all could break them. In that same way, the four of y'all should be working together. No one will be able to hurt you. No one will be able to break through. No one will be able to reveal that which you don't want to reveal. You see, the four brothers realized that what their father was trying to teach them was that there was this strength and power and this unity. Y'all, the very thing that distinguishes this newly formed group of Christians is the very differences that they hold. You see, they were all heirs of this promise together that this community was not a threat to the individuality, but this place where they discovered it, that through community that they were allowed to live out their calling from God, that each one would be allowed to live his or her or their own calling from God. Y'all, the unity of the whole, it arises when the differentiated activities of the individuals all contribute something distinctive, but necessary. Bob Goff said, and I'll end here, we cannot become like God, so God became like us. God chose to show how to heal instead of kill, how to mend instead of destroy, how to love instead of hate, how to live instead of long for more. That's because love is never stationary. In the end, love doesn't keep thinking about it, making plans with a lengthy to-do list. Simply put, love just does. And y'all, out of that love, I invite you to do too. Thanks be to God as we live and love together. Amen. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Come, one day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. time to give your heart come just as you are to worship come just as you are before your God come one day every tongue will confess you are God one day every knee will bow still the greatest treasure remains for those gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your Good morning, Saguaro. As we listen to the prayers of the people, 
let us be aware that there are some people who choose to keep their concerns private. God knows this, and he promises to be with them. This week, we pray for healing for Johnny Kelly, Wendy Gonzalez's cousin. We pray for Iris Carson and, our, and the Hicks family. We pray for Donna and Alan. They are friends of Chris and Dave Day. We pray for Pat Sutton, Anel Gooden, and Weston Derrick, my three-year-old great-nephew. In turn, we celebrate new members Michael and Lori Malone, and that Elizabeth Tolan Smith has been the food director here at Saguaro for the Soul Food Delivered for a whole year now. For our world, we continue to pray for the immigrant families still separated at the border and around the world. We pray for the asylum seekers at our border and also throughout the world. Everyone everywhere affected by the coronavirus and continue prayers for Israel and Palestine. Now let's all go to prayer by saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior. Soon dissolve like 
makes snow the sun for bear to shine but god who called me here below will be forever mine will be Thank you. Thank you for your continued generosity for the many ways in which you support our church. Y'all, the mission and vision of Saguaro Christian Church can't be realized without each of y'all. That's the beauty of being in this together, that each of us take what we got and we're able to mesh it with each other. And before long, there's this beautiful way of being church. And it's all thanks to each of y'all for the ways in which you each of you give of your hard earned dollar for each of the ways in which you volunteer of your hard coveted time and for the many ways in which you use that which God has gifted you with that that talent and so thank you thank you for the many ways in which your gift will continue to bring about the message of Jesus the Christ here in this space through this Saguaro Christian Church into all of the world we are so grateful to be in this journey together. Thank you. Welcome to Dominion. This is what we remember. We remember Jesus loves us. This is where he first learned of us. We love God. Our neighbors. And ourselves. And what do we need? We need a plate of bread. With bread. Cup with wine or grape juice, depending on your age. Does everyone have everything? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Let's hear a story. Friends, go ahead and find your communion elements. We hear a story anew as we hear it together afresh. May these words fall with you. It was on the night before Jesus was to be betrayed when he took bread. After blessing it, he broke it, and then he shared it. And he said, here, take and eat, for this is broken for you. In the same way, he took cup, and after giving thanks for it, he poured it out, and he shared it, and he said, here, take and drink, for this is my bloodshed for the forgiveness of sins. And so, friends, we remember together that as often as we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we remember Jesus' life. But we know that he has died, and yet we can celebrate that he is risen and among us still. Will you join me in sharing in communion this morning? Thanks be to God. Amen. children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send your love, send your power, send your grace. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit children praying. Send your love, send your power, send your grace. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send your love, send your power, in your grace. Friends, today has been such a beautiful day, and I hope you feel the same. 
If you need that Zoom link for our congregational meeting that will happen right after our service of worship, please send a message. Go ahead and find your candle that you lit at the beginning of the service. As we prepare to depart, if you are not getting our weekly newsletter and you'd like to, please let us know. We'll, we'll get you on that list. Anyone who has graduated this year, whether it is from elementary or middle or preschool or college or grad school or whatever point in whichever graduation, we want to celebrate you. So please let us know. Send us your name, your picture and where and what you graduated from. And then finally, throughout your week, it is my hope and my prayer and my sincere, earnest desire that you will know at the depth of your being that you're loved by God. And it is out of that love that we go and serve the world. And so find that candle and hear these words. And may the light that has been in this one place at this one time be in all places at all times. So friends go and be a light for the world. Amen. May the Lord, mighty God, bless and keep you forever. Grant you peace, perfect peace, courage in every endeavor. Lift your eyes to see God's face and God's grace forever. May the Lord, mighty God, bless and keep you forever. Property Brothers approve of this message. <laughs> <laughs>